Well, we're going to continue in a series that we've been on for some time called God Wants You Well. And we're just um, camping on this for a while, talking about bodily healing and um, just different facets of that. And all those messages, all the previous messages are available online. You can, you can go to the website, you can go to YouTube, you can go, if you want to scroll back and go to Facebook, you can. It's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Spotify, so a number of places to catch up. But let's look at 3 John 2. This evening, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. I I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And we talked about that. I mean, your soul has something to do with it. Um, You know, as you understand more, you're going to walk in the things of God more. But notice it says that you may prosper in all things and be in health. In Amplified Classic, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul uh, keeps well and prospers. I, I, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well. In the NIV, it says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go with you. That you may enjoy good, well, good health and that all may go well with you. Isn't that, you know, we talked about this, but just, you know, recapping. I mean, isn't that what you would want for everybody that you care for? Right there. That you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you. Right? If you love somebody, you don't go, well, I just hope you're sick and laid up. How you doing? <laughs> no. You, yeah. I, no, you don't do that. Well, how much more God? God wants the best for us. If we believe he's a good heavenly father and he loves us, well, that goes right along with it. it it's, it's just dysfunctional to have anything else. You think, oh, God loves me, but, you know, he doesn't really want me to, to have a well body. It might be his purposes. You would not apply that to any human being. You would say, you are a fraud. You're a deceiver. If you you'd call me uh, your friend, but you want me laid up, there's something wrong. Is that not true? If we're honest, that you would think there's something wrong with this. Well, then, of course, that there's something wrong with that belief with God. That's religion. That's men's ideas. That's just not true. No, there is no evil in God. God is good. Sickness is bad. And God doesn't want us to be sick, period. Don't try to relit- make it a religious idea that some well, he might have a purpose. No, he doesn't. Your, your, your parent, if they loved you, does not have a purpose in, in doing something harmful to you. There's discipline, but that doesn't include this. God can discipline you. Most of how he does that is by his word. <laughs> Amen? Amen? He tells you, you know, no, son, daughter, do this. He doesn't have to do something to get your attention like that. Now, if you, you know, there's, we live in a fallen world. You, you get into this stuff if you don't listen to him because Satan's the God of this world. Satan is bad. God is good. We talked about that. I mean, and everybody would agree, sickness is bad. Nobody in here is going, I really hope I get sick this weekend. I hope I just get a debilitating sickness. I just cannot do anything. That would be awesome. Nobody thinks that. And so if we can agree that sickness is bad, well, is God good or is he bad? Well, if he's good, well, then it should be really easy. God has nothing to do with sickness. He doesn't want, he doesn't want bad things for you. He doesn't bring about bad things for good. Amen? John 10.10. 10. So we, we, you know, we talked about some of that uh, more, and we'll just keep building on those things. We can go back and listen to it. John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. This is Jesus speaking. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus makes it very clear. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Well, Satan's a thief. Sickness is a thief. Doesn't sickness, it steals your time, it steals your money, it kills, obviously. It destroys, destroys lives, destroys relationships, destroys marriages, destroys careers. It is a thief. It's of the devil. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. That's him. That's God. Look at quick in the Amplified Classic. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I 
came that they may have and enjoy. He's talking about his sheep in context. He said, I'm a good shepherd. And he say, he's talking about the sheep. Well, that's us. That's you, me. If we believed on him, we're a sheep. So he's saying, I have come that they or us that we may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Notice that they may have and enjoy life. Well, you're not enjoying life having it in abundance to the full until it overflows if you're dealing with sickness or disease, right? You're just not. It doesn't mean you can't have joy. You can have joy in the middle of something that's pressing on you, yes, but how much better just not to have it <laughs> and not have to push through because you don't have it. Well, that's God's will for us. Praise God. So we've talked about a number of facets uh, about that. So whatever we see, we, see, we talked about this, whatever we see Jesus doing, we can know that's the will of the Father. You saw, and we talked about, um, looked at some uh, Jesus going about, and uh, the Bible says that, that if you've seen, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, whatever you see Jesus doing is the will of the Father. So as we, when we looked at, at Jesus, we're going to look at um, some specific things about Jesus' ministry and just the Word of God in general. Um, about God's will to heal everybody. And we talked about that's always God's will to heal. But I just want to look at some scriptures of how many times in the Bible it talks about Him healing or God healing all. Hebrews 13, 8, as we get into this, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, Jesus Christ is God. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so whatever you see Jesus doing, whatever you see God doing, you know He hasn't changed. The way He's interacting with people has changed. The covenant has changed. But God's, God's will, His character has not changed. He's been around forever, which we can't comprehend. Don't even try. Our minds aren't built that way. Our finite, you know, we just, we, we are used to having something, having things have a beginning and an end. But God has always been. And you just, your mind just stops right there just you can act like you understand it but we're just like forever so you go back billions of years he was there trillions of years there quadrillions of years there whatever's after that quintillion and you just keep going you just go and then you can go multiply you know quadrillion times quadrillion and he was still there i mean you just get into just ridiculous numbers and he was still there. He just always was. That just We just can't deal with that, but that's okay. God, that's why he's God and we're not. I'm sure we'll understand more as we go on, you know. We get, we'll be able to see some things as we get with him for eternity. But then you go on the opposite, and then we're going to always be around forever and ever and ever. Well, God always has been, and he's always the same. So whatever we see him do, and we can know he's the same. Let's look back just a couple scriptures, just to even see this in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 7, verse 14. And then we're just going to read a lot in the New Testament. You know, we're just spending some time just turning over different facets of this stuff. You know, we just, we have time on Wednesdays. That's what, as we got into this, we're just like, you know, we're just going to take our time. We're not going to exhaust this subject by any means, but... Um, you know, just meditate and just um, just surround ourselves with these things for a while. Deuteronomy 7, verse 14 says, You shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have known, but will lay them on all those who hate you. Verse 15, And the Lord will take away from you all sickness. I love that. Because how much is that? How much is left after that? None. I'll take away from you all sickness. Look at uh, Psalm 103, verse 1. It says, the Lord will, uh, Psalm 103, verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Verse 3, 
who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, all of them. In other words, there's not a single one that God uh, cannot make right. And that holds for 2022. Now, in 2022, the medical, medical science has learned a lot. Thank God for medical science. There's a lot of people who would be dead if it weren't for medical science or just completely, you know, unable to function in life. Thank God for it. Medical science is a helps ministry to the Lord. It, it is, they, they are not the healers. If, 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 they, if a, a doctor cuts you, a surgeon cuts you open, sews you up, if your body doesn't take hold and start healing, you're done. I've heard of many cases, you know, you, your body's got to take hold and heal and do its thing. They're depending on that happening. We, it's like, you know, you take certain things out of way or, or help the body, you know, uh, boost some things. But at the end of the day, the body's, the, 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 amount, the um, measure of healing power that God's already built in to the body has got to take hold. He is the healer. And he knows, he created the body, he knows how to fix anything. In 2022, there are things that medical science cannot fix, do not have the capability, don't have the knowledge. Now, you go back 200 years, there was a whole lot of things that they didn't have the knowledge that now they do have the knowledge to fix, right? We have certain cures, we have treatments, and, but, and that will increase. But what if you're in the category where there's, there's no fix for you, medically speaking? Well, then in the natural, you have no hope. But there is always hope with God. He heals. He can heal anything. <laughs> he, he made the human body. It's, there is no name of any disease that God goes, oh, we can't touch. We, do not, we don't know how to, to deal with that. We haven't figured it out yet. They're working on it. The angels, you know, they're working, but we just don't know. No, he knows it right now. He knows exactly if he, you know, and he creates planets. He created the human body. If something needs to be replaced, that's not a big deal either. You know, people have been healed they, with, they, they, they don't have eardrums. Something's been removed and then they can hear. People have had things removed. I, I just was reading about, you know, there's a man um, that was healed of tuberculosis, I believe it was, had, had a hole in his lung. And, and couldn't function, but was healed. And it was he's a walking miracle because they came in and examined him. They're like, you have a hole in your lung still, but he's functioning perfectly. <laughs> uh, God knows how to fix whatever needs to be fixed, regardless if it looks like it should be fixed or not. God can, God can sustain you. <laughs> and so it, it is not trouble. He can, you know, people have grown out limbs. That seems so, that's like, it's impossible. Well, sure, for men it's impossible. If you're the manufacturer, it's not so hard. It'd be like, you know, you, you got your car and go like, there's no way this tire could be replaced. Oh, no, they make them every day. Boom, boom. It's that. See, that's easy for us to believe because, well, we, we know we just go down to the dealer. Well, God is the manufacturer. He made humans. And if we'll believe him, if you believe in a big God, a God that is all powerful, and we really believe that, then it's not so hard to believe that he could fix anything that needs to be fixed. That, that just follows. That's logical. A four-year-old could understand that. God can do anything, so he can do this. It's that easy. Can he fix that? Well, sure, he can do anything. So yeah, that would include anything he can do it. And that's the way we have to think. We gotta we gotta reprogram our minds because we're just flooded with things in this earth that are negative and that look like they're impossible. And then if we say, well, it's impossible, impossible by what standard? Impossible for people? Okay, we know that's true. There's all kinds of things that are impossible for people. And there's things that are impossible for one person that are just possible easily for another. And, and for instance, I cannot dunk a basketball on a 10-foot rim. Not without a springboard or something. I'm talking about physically being able to jump. You know, even when I was in high school and college, I could not physically dunk a... I couldn't palm a basketball, let alone get up there. And even with a mini basketball, which I could palm, I, I just did not have the physical ability to get up to a rim. Now, yeah, if the, li the rim's, you know, lower. You know, we were lower to seven foot, eight foot, whatever. Okay, that's a different thing. Then we, then we act like, you know, we're Michael Jordan or whatever. But we couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. There are people that that is easy for them. 
For me, it's impossible for another human being. They do it all the time. Then they do it with flair. They can do windmills and they can do backwards. You know, it's just like make, make you look pitiful. I just, it's impossible for me, but it's not impossible for people. But then there's things that are just flat possible for all mankind. They just don't know. They can't do it. But God is not a man, and he can do it. So we need to think, no, God can do it. Yeah, we need to change our mind. We say something, and we're thinking impossible. No, no, God, that's possible with God. He can do that. See, we start believing like that. That's called faith. You believe that he can do something. Now you open the door for him to be able to do something. It's not that he didn't want to. It's just, you know, if we're like, you can't do it. Okay, well, if you say so. He can't do it for us. He wants to do it. And so when we start saying, you can do it, God, I believe you can do it. We've stepped into the realm of impossibility, but we have the one that can do the impossible. So now that's how miracles happen. When you trust him and act on his word, then he can do what he always wanted to do anyway, and it comes into manifestation. Now, we're going to just go through. I just want you to see how many times, this is just, you know, one facet, how many times you see, I don't believe this is everything, this is just some, where, where Jesus, uh, and you even see it in, in Acts, where, where he's going around and how many times he healed everyone present. Now, we've talked about, there are times, you know, the last several messages we've talked about uh, the importance of hearing the Word of God and how hearing about, like what we're talking about right now, we're hearing the word. We're hearing the truth. Well, that faith comes by hearing. But you have to hear something in order to believe something. Now, we talked about that God can do things independently as the Spirit wills, but you can't control that. But you can, you can always initiate healing by faith. And so that's, we're focusing on that part, but you need to hear something. But if you don't hear, if you or if you ignore, you hear the wrong way, in other words, you reject, well, that affects what God himself can do. It affected what Jesus could do. And we read about that, how in his hometown, it says he could not do any mighty work. That means he couldn't do, any, he couldn't do anything very uh, substantial as far as healing. It says he could only just heal a few sick folk, which, which gives the connotation of a few people that didn't have much wrong with them anyway. But in other places, he could do much uh, just do miracles, that's because, and it said it was because of their unbelief. They didn't believe him. They, they scorned him. They were like, who's this, this dude? Nah, he, he's, he's Mary's son. He's Joseph's son. He's, he's brothers and sisters with us. Here's all his brothers and sisters. What, who it? So they rejected him. They didn't listen. So that's important. But when you see over and over where people came believing him, and we talked about that too, but we're just going to see here, when people came to him, there was times when everybody was healed over and over. Just everybody got healed. And so that's, that's his will all the time. But we, we have something to do with it. But we just need to know that's his will. And we've talked about his will. We're just going to see another facet of it. Now, let's look at Matthew 8, verse 16. It says, when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Now notice, we're going to read this, this type of thing over and over. He healed all who were sick, all of them. All of them. Everybody there got healed. As we're reading this, start thinking that way. It doesn't matter how much you've heard over the years about healing. It only matters what, what is vital in our life now. What is alive, in other words. What is quickened. If we get to the point where you think, oh, I've heard that, it's a sure sign we've let it slip. Because, you know, think about it in a uh, uh, husband-wife relationship. If you get it to where it's like, oh, yeah, I married to her. Yeah, I married to him. Been married for, you know, 20 years, and you're kind of like, hmm. That means you're not really, your relationship is, there's probably something lacking, right? If it's like, you know, you, you had a favorite meal, but you get to the place where it's like, eh, we're having that. <laughs> what does that mean? You don't really like it like you used to. It's something that used to really excite you. We're having, mm, we're having tacos. We're having pizza. We're having steak. Now it's like, eh, we're having steak. Yeah. So when we're talking about these things, we want to make sure that we, we have it alive and, and um, that, that it, is, it is meaningful to us, that it's 
pertinent to us. And so as we're looking at these things, just build a picture. Here, it's saying that they were, that he healed all who were sick. Just think about it. Start looking. All of them. All of them. There's, see, sometimes if you've been around this thing, you say, well, maybe one person get healed. Maybe, gosh, we sure hope so. I mean, that would, gosh, that's what we believe, but do we see it? We erase that and get to where, no, the Bible said he healed all. This is what we expect. Now, do people have something to do with it and they're receiving? Yes, but don't make that so big that it becomes a roadblock that we just don't expect things. Think, no, we expect God to do what he said. All you got to do is believe what he said and it can happen for you. That's it. Don't make it the super high hurdle that, oh, that's the holy grail of being a, you know, you know, believe in the word and believe in healing. Gosh, if you can just get something healed, that's an elite club. Instead, think, no, that's, that's normal. That's normal. That's what, that's what God does. That's what he wants to do. And in my life, that's what he's doing. Amen? It says, he healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses because it's part of the atonement, part of salvation. We'll, we're going to dig into that specifically more, I believe. Uh, but suffice to say, that is God's will, and it is provided for us. Let's look at Matthew 10, verse 1. It says, And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of, the, of disease. In the NIV, it says, He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every sickness or every disease and sickness. Now, this is before Jesus went to the cross, before he had actually paid for um, the forgiveness of sins and, and our bodily healing. But he, these disciples had authority to do this. This is actually in the Old Covenant. This is in the twilight between the two. But even here, they are going forward and healing every sickness, every disease. And in the New Covenant, every believer has this authority and has this right. It is our right and privilege that no sickness, no disease can lord it over us, can have authority over us. Everyone. It doesn't matter what, what it is. It doesn't have authority. There is no name of any sickness that does not fall uh, under this category. doesn't matter how new it is. Thank God for that. Matthew 12, verse 15. It says, But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Notice, great multitudes followed him. Well, why are they following him? Well, they're, they're coming after him. They're believing something. You don't just follow somebody around for no reason. Of course, there were religious people. We know that. But these people were following him, obviously, in faith. It says there were great multitudes. I mean, you know, a multitude is a lot of people. This is great multitudes. They're following him, and it says he healed them all. Mass healing. You guys Okay. A lot of people healed, just healed, 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 healed. I mean, multitudes, all of them, all of them healed, all of them well, all of them, whatever was wrong with them was not wrong with them after Jesus, after they had an encounter with Jesus. Look at Luke 440. Now, all these scriptures, you can write them down if you want, but every, you know, we put Say the scripture sheet, you know, like I'm using all with all the versions and everything, they're all available on our website. Once the edited version of the video and audio is on our website, then on that page, if you go to the media page and, and click on the actual message, there's a download section, and you can download this in a Word doc or a PDF. And you can have, you know, it's all there so that, you know, then it's all you can cut and paste it or print it out or whatever. And if you, if you want, on the media menu, if you, there's a, um, a menu item that's uh, sermon scriptures. If you click on that, it'll tell you exactly how to do it. And there's directions on how to do that. But just so you know. Luke 440 says, When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases 
brought them to him. Now notice what's going on here. All those that had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him. All that, so people are bringing people that they know have a problem to Jesus. Well, they believe something. They, they believe. So they're coming in faith. They're believing. They're bringing these people to Jesus because they believe Jesus can do something with them. That has so much to do with people actually receiving. You know, in this country, and we're believing this is changing, okay? But there has been so much where that's waned. You know, people don't necessarily want to go to church, let alone drive miles or walk miles to, um, for a healing meeting or something. But in other countries to this day where they, they don't necessarily have access to some of the same medical care and they don't have another hope, you know, and they will walk for miles and bring, I've heard of people carrying people on their back for miles, a sick person on their back, you know, somebody crippled or something, on their back to a meeting. And then you get thousands of those people in a stadium or an arena, and they're all there. They're, they believe, they are expecting so much that they are walking for miles, doing what they need to do just to get in contact. That atmosphere is charged with faith. People are there expecting. They're not just like, well, let's see what you got. They're there just like these people, bringing them. And when that happens, yes, you see miracles. You see, it's not that God is moving specially you know, different, doing something he wants to do in other countries that he doesn't want to do here, because this used to happen here as well, and it does happen from time to time. But you, it's an expectancy. It's when people, that's why we're, we you know, preach on this. We talk about it. When we come, we should come to church. We say come to church. We're the church. We meet together. We should come expecting to hear from God. Whether it's in the area of healing or anything else, we come believing God's going to minister to us. We're not just coming to you know, sit back and be entertained. We're coming expecting. And when we do, God's able to do whatever it is. He's able to flow. In that meeting, regardless if it's healing or something else, people's needs will get met because we're in corporate faith. It's so much easier. I mean, thank God, you don't have to wait for a meeting like that. You can get healed anywhere. But it is so easy to receive in an atmosphere of faith like that. You know, has anybody been in a real, I mean, a big corporate meeting? Yeah, you, thank God. Where two or three are gathered together, he's there. And, but when people are, it's just charged with expectancy. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. I just heard somebody talking about it. It's hard to be anything but in believing and in joy and peace. It's just because the atmosphere is charged with it. And so that's what we're seeing here. And that's the kind of atmosphere you want to cultivate. In a meeting like this, you want because so then if somebody needs something, they need to be uh, receive healing, that it's just easy for them. Let's read this again, read the end of it. It says, when the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. He laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. You know, we, we'll talk about, I believe we'll get to this you know, later about different methods you can receive healing. Um, laying, having hands laid on you is one of them. You know, people mock that. It's ignorance. You talk about faith healers and stuff. Jesus was doing this. He laid hands on, does that what it, not what it says? He laid his hands on them and healed every one of them. That's one way you can receive. It's not the only way. Not even the best way. The best way is just believe, standing and believing on what God has already provided for us for, for ourselves, but it is a way. Let's look at Luke 6, 17, just going over uh, several of these verses. Talking about him healing everyone. Luke 6, 17. It says, He came down with them and stood on a level place with the crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And with a whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. Healed them all. Just think of it. A big group of people and everyone, not a single person, went home the way they came. He's faithful. Acts 5.16 so now we go into the ministry. We're going to read another one that, that 
talks about Jesus, but some, some, uh, some incidents is, incidents is in Acts. Same thing's happening. Acts 5, 16. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. So not, it doesn't just end with Jesus. You see the disciples, the apostles uh, moving here, and they were all healed. This is what we, as children of God, can expect to walk in. doesn't mean everybody has a, a healing ministry, but you can minister healing to every person. You know, you can uh, pray for people. You can minister healing to individuals. Acts 28, verse uh, 1. I love this account. Several things here. It says, now when they had escaped, talking about Paul, and they were uh, shipwrecked. Now when they had escaped, then, then they then found out that the island where they were, uh, where they landed was called Malta. I knew a dude that went there. I was talking to him around. No, I haven't kept up with him. But in, when I was going to Rhema, he and his wife were going to move to Malta. Like, you know, it's outside, off the coast of Italy, I think. Um, and they were going to they were going to be involved in ministry on this island. Fun fact. Verse two. And the natives showed uh, uh, showed uh, uh, us, excuse me. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a, bun a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he escaped from the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. So right here, you know, Paul, he gets bit by a snake that apparently they're familiar with because they expect him to die. But he didn't die. So right there, Paul's walking in something. And so, you know, if the Bible says no deadly thing, no, no, if you eat anything deadly, it will not harm you. And it talks about, you know, serpents. You just shouldn't. I don't think you handle serpents on purpose. But here, Paul inadvertently, because uh, you're just testing God. I mean, that's just, you're just, why, why would you, that's arrogance. You know, you say, oh, I'm going to pick up the snake. Well, that's not what that verse is talking about in Mark. But talking about twofold, serpents, meaning uh, there's demonic activity, but also literal, like here. Paul is comes in contact with something, and... It bites him, and it has no harm. So you don't have to be afraid if something, you know, you, you eat something that you realize, oh, shouldn't have eaten that. Just say, no, that will not harm me. If something bit you, no, it's not going to harm me. That doesn't mean, you know, if you have first aid, it doesn't mean don't do that. you got to be led. But, hey, you know, if you have something natural, you don't have to, to shun that. But um, you can believe God. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to harm you. So anyway, they, Paul is not harmed here. Verse 7 then, in that region there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius, who received, who received us and entertained us courteously for three days. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. So this man, this guy is a dignitary. His father is sick. And so Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. So the guy that was well known, his dad is sick. Paul gets that guy healed, and then everybody comes. Anybody on the island, the whole island, anybody that was sick came, and then they got healed. Isn't that awesome? I mean, he just emptied out the island. There's nobody on the island that's sick after this. It says they also came and they were healed. It's pretty good, pretty good record there. Acts 10, verse 36, Jesus. He 
It says, The word which, the Lord, which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, He is Lord of all, that word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Now we read at the beginning, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We read all these instances of Jesus healing all. And then we read uh, accounts of the apostles and the disciples healing all. Here it's saying that Jesus, he was anointed to go about doing good and healing all. Healing all. And he hasn't changed today, so that is his will. That's, what, that's always what he desires. And that, that is not an impossible uh, result. Did you hear me? It is not impossible that everybody that comes for healing gets healed. We can renew our minds, start thinking, well, that's, that's pretty normal by Bible standards. You know, there has been a lot of stuff, there's been a lot of dryness in the world, in spiritually speaking. There has been. But I do believe that's changing. You're starting to see some things, some things changing, especially after the pandemic, you know, people coming to God in a different way and just being, just not seeing things in the earth. And I, there is a stirring on the earth. But yeah, there was dryness. There was excitement over these things for, for a long time. But people grew cold. And the move of God in these areas, there's been different waves. It, it, it waned. And so people's expectations starts getting low. Well, maybe we'll see something. But that's not the biblical way. And the Bible hasn't changed and God hasn't changed. Jesus is the same. And the biblical standard is over and over we saw everybody was healed. Everybody was healed. Everybody was healed. Everybody was healed. What's the difference between not having people healed and people healed is just believing God will do what he said he would do and he'll do it now. That he hasn't changed. That whatever he said he would do, that he'll do. And change our expectancy and change our, our outlook, our perspective. Amen. That's why we go over the verses. We start. We just look. This is what this is what the word, word says. And in our own lives, we look at the verses. You just for ourselves look. Scripture, 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 scripture. God is in the healing business, and it doesn't matter what it was. Notice, it didn't matter what they had. They were all healed. See, we categorize and go, well, that that's easy, easy, hard. Not that we could do any of it. I mean, you may be able to take an aspirin or ibuprofen and mask something. We're talking about it going. You can't make that happen. So it doesn't matter how big or little it is in our eyes. It's like God did it all. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, the big things that we would say, you know, deaf, blind, lame, all done. Same thing. Got a headache? Done too. Got a hangnail? Okay. God's faithful. He can do it. He's able and he's provided it. Amen. Praise God. 